uh, reality according to the Buddhist atomism that I'm talking about today. Uh, you should remove the idea of the word atom from your mind and start over with today's talk. The, we're used to thinking of the word atom as how scientists have told us uh, what atoms are, meaning that they're these little composite bodies with you know, a nucleus and some weird things, cloudy things outside of them. Uh, just forget that completely. That's a, a very new development. Uh, using the word atom in that way is a new development started around 1900, but the word atom goes way back spans many different cultures and I'll be using the word atom in its traditional sense where the word atom means basic building block a partless uh, item that makes up everything uh, we all know that we've been told in you know, sixth grade or whatever that reality is composed of tiny building blocks these building blocks make up everything and they are uh, sometimes we're told that they're partless such as for example with an electron that's I'm using the word atom in that sense. So in, for today's talk, an atom is an electron. Not uh, an atom is not a constituent, or doesn't have a constituent that is an electron. So a quark, an atom, anything that's partless and therefore irreducible is uh, responsible for being an, a basic uh, piece of ultimate reality. That's what we mean by atom. So again, that's our picture right there. You'll see in a moment the significance of why I have this film that I've made up here. Okay, so Buddhism is unlike any other philosophy or religion. Uh, I'm in fact not sure why, why it's called either a philosophy or religion. And in today's talk you'll see that Buddhism is an empirical study and I'll just equate it with quantum physics. And therefore Buddhism is a scientific pursuit, not primarily a philosophic or religious one. Okay, we've all been told that reality is composed of basic building blocks, the ones I just talked about. Tiny items that are so small that we can't see them. So for example, if I cut up this lectern here, I can cut the pieces up uh, so they become so small that pretty quick the pieces, uh, you can uh, deduce that the pieces of the electron are so small that you can't see them. So the, elect the lectern is made up of items that are invisible to your naked eye. Okay, so you can keep cutting and cutting and cutting. And, you know, then you ask the question, can we keep cutting forever? Or is there an ultimate piece that can't be cut anymore? If the answer is that there's an ultimate piece, that means that, for example, this lectern or anything else is composed of an ultimate basic building block. Okay, so the group of scientists that are responsible for studying these are called quantum physicists. You know, you should not be intimidated by that phrase, it's just a label, refer to the people that study basic building blocks. Okay, it's a very simple idea. Don't let terms scare you. Uh, but you may be surprised if I tell you that these were not first discovered by quantum physicists. As far as I can tell from my analysis of the history of culture and philosophy and so forth, it appears that a group of Buddhists in India uh, around four, five, six, seven hundred 4, 5, 6, 700 A.D. were responsible for first discovering quantum reality. Uh, so let me give you a quote here from a very famous Buddhist scholar. I think his name, his name's pronounced different ways depending on who you're talking to, but Chavatsky. Uh, he is a uh, very famous European and uh, he's very famous in Europe and Russia and America, but also India uh, for his work in uh, outlining what's called pre-classical uh, Buddhism. And here's a quote that he gives us from his famous works called Buddhist Logic. The Buddhists denied the existence of substantial matter altogether. Movement consists for them of moments. It is a staccato movement Momentary flashes of a stream of energy. Everything is evanescent, says the Buddhist, because there is no stuff. That's from, I said I wouldn't cite, but here you go. Uh, his book, Buddhist Logic, Volume 1, 1962, page 19. So the point here then is, how many of you think this is moving? It doesn't seem to be going like this. There is no motion in that uh, film right there. 